In the aftermath of a familial conflict and a series of tumultuous events, George II, the King of Great Britain, found himself embroiled in a new chapter marked by political manoeuvres, family discord and personal challenges. The vacuum left by his father's absence propelled George II to seek excitement on the prussian Hanoverian border, inadvertently sparking a clash with his own family. As he navigated complex familial feuds, the king's decisions from declining a duel to engaging in disputes with his estranged son Frederick painted a portrait of a ruler grappling with both external and internal adversaries. The narrative unfolds with George II's return to his Hanoverian roots, a perilous sea voyage, and a resilient spirit determined to weather the storms, both figurative and literal, that define this phase of his reign. Emerging as a darling of the masses, George II defied the odds, surviving smallpox, military clashes, and an assassination attempt, all before reaching the age of 35. His seemingly invincible stature endeared him to the English public, but it ignited tensions with his father, the King of England, resulting in a strained relationship fraught with jealousy and mistrust. A master on the battlefield, George faced a different kind of conflict in the realm of politics. In a spiteful manoeuvre, his father appointed the Duke of Newcastle as a sponsor for George's second son, fully aware of George's disdain for the Duke. The strategic move led to a heated exchange of words at the baptism, ultimately escalating into a dual challenge, a confrontation that ended in turmoil for all parties involved. Transferring his marital inclinations to civilian life, George found himself at odds with his father, who, to quell potential hostilities, resorted to a disturbing solution. Prior to the scheduled duel, King George I confined and effectively locked up George and Caroline in their chambers, mirroring a dark familial history. The baptismal episode may have been a cunning ploy by the deceptive and envious father to sideline his son, setting the stage for even greater conflicts. Family disputes eclipsed George's battlefield experiences as King George I took drastic measures, banishing both George and Caroline from St James's Palace entirely. In a cruel twist of fate, history repeated itself as the king followed the footsteps of earlier familial banishments. Echoing his childhood separation from his mother, George faced the heart-wrenching reality of being estranged from his own children. While banished from the palace, George II's father ensured custody of their offspring, causing immense distress to the royal couple. Driven by the agony of separation, George and Caroline staged a daring break-in at St George's Palace to reunite with their children. The emotional reunion saw Caroline fainting and the typically resilient George breaking down, shedding tears of joy. Eventually, the king relented, allowing George to see his children once a week. Despite the desire to confront his father's cruelty, George, now the king, couldn't openly challenge him without risking treason. However, fate intervened when King George I passed away in June 1727, allowing George II the last laugh as he chose to defy tradition and did not attend his father's funeral. As George II ascended to the throne, he swiftly embraced the opulence lifestyle denied to him by his father. With unrestricted access to the kingdom, he indulged in an annual allowance of £800,000, equivalent to a staggering £100 million today, ushering in a reign marked by newfound luxuries and unforeseen challenges. Eager for a new source of excitement after his father's departure, George II, now lacking a familial adversary, disregarded court advice and initiated aggressive manoeuvres along the prussian Hanoverian border. The thrill of battle was cooling and George II was determined to make a personal affair. In an unexpected twist, George II found himself in conflict with his own family as he encroached upon the prussian Hanoverian border, where the ruler happened to be none other than his brother-in-law and first cousin, Frederick William I of Prussia. 
Despite the familial ties, an additional motive fueled George II's contentious actions. The clash between George II and Frederick William I escalated, both being formidable fighters unwilling to back down. The tension grew so intense that diplomats proposed a duel to resolve the matter and avert an all-out war, presenting a surprising turn of events for a king known for his love of combat. Displaying unexpected restraint, George II declined the duel, recognising the strategic wisdom in acknowledging defeat. The looming conflict with Frederick William I, dubbed the soldier king by his subjects, prompted George II to reevaluate his approach, even though occasional fits of frustration persisted. Unable to engage in a battle with his brother-in-law, George II redirected his familial feud towards his estranged son, Frederick. While George II had been entangled in disputes with his own father in England, his relationship with Frederick soured further during the son's upbringing in the Hanovian court. By the time father and son reunited in England after 14 years, they shared little in common except for a penchant for familial discord. Despite being the King of Great Britain, George II's Hanoverian roots beckoned, leading him to visit his homeland in 1736. The decision to temporarily abandon his English subjects stirred discontent, forcing George to hastily plan his return amid mounting dissatisfaction. Eager to appease his subjects, George II set sail for England without checking the weather conditions, unwittingly sailing into a formidable winter storm in the English Channel. The ill-fated journey unfolded as a disaster for the king, revealing his lack of seafaring prowess. Weeks passed without any word of George II or his ship, sparking rumours among his subjects that he had succumbed to the wintry tempest. Contrary to expectations, the resilient king emerged from the shore a month later, albeit not entirely unscathed. Following his miraculous return, George II withdrew from public view, his health compromised by the taxing voyage, resulting in a fever and a painful case of hemorrhoids. Meanwhile, rumours spread by his son, Frederick, painted a bleak picture of the king's condition, underestimating King II's resilience. Aware of his son's ambitions for the throne, King George II, familiar with his father-son conflicts, defied rumours of his impending demise. Despite illness, he attended a social event, showcasing a determined effort to maintain appearances amid the ongoing familial strife. Join us in part three to discover the concluding chapters of George II's eventful reign, where familial discontent, health challenges and unusual final wishes shape the monarch's legacy. In these entries, we explore George II's complex relationships with his children, witnessing his aversion to some and yearning for others to fade away. The narrative also unfolds the decline in the king's health, culminating in a peculiar end, marked by a poignant yet unconventional desire to reunite with his departed wife in the afterlife. 